Hey, Dean. Um, just off the bat, you guys had Denver tomorrow, um, and obviously you guys had the, that series against them last year. They returned a lot of the same guys. What are you kind of looking for out of that matchup, if anything, um, that might tell you where this team is and, and how far you guys have come along in, in terms of your development? Um, you're just looking to play basketball. I mean, we're not looking forward to one specific opponent to see where we are. Um, every game we match up with anyone and we can kind of dictate where we are in the season. And, uh, you know, it's a good team. You know, a team uh, we played last year, um, you know, and was successful against in the playoffs, but uh, it's a different year. So, you know, we can't look at last year's team. Um, they have a different team. We have a different team. Um, but, you know, it's, it's going to be you know, a good battle between two good teams. And just as a quick follow-up, is there anything in particular you, you relish about going against uh, Jokic and, and what he brings to the field? Uh, I mean, he's a hell of a player. Um, he's playing extremely well uh, this season. Uh, he's able to shoot the ball. You know, he's able to, um, you know, score out of post. He's able to pass. Um, so he does it all for their team. You know, he brings the ball up, and their guard sets screens for him. Um, you know, he, he's running the action. So uh, he brings a different dynamic that we probably haven't seen this year. Um, but it's always fun going up against, you know, a player like that. Okay, except Dan Wakey, please. Hey, Nate, are you going to read uh, Jared's book? No, nah, uh, I thought I thought it was the audio book. I think you can read it, too. Uh, I'm not, I'm gonna, are you going to listen to Jared's audio book? No, nah, I, told, I told him to leave me out of leave me out of that stuff. It's, I've been getting tagged all on Instagram and stuff from comments from his book. So, uh, no, nah, I'll, probably, I'll probably listen to it, though, um, you know, support the teammate. Good for you. Uh, in, in, in relation again to, to, to Denver and, and, and Nicola, um, you know, as a big man who, who's a skilled player who can do a lot of different things, um, how much fun is it to see kind of that position open up and, and let guys kind of do things like the way that Jokic does and bring you to them and not be put into sort of like the and just go stand on the block and, and do close moves? I think that's just the way the, the league has gone um, since maybe like my third year in the league. You know, guys have the bigs have kind of shifted to you know being at being able to you know shoot the ball, um, put it on the floor, pass, and not just you know the traditional bigs. You know, going to the block, posting up, you know, and um, you know doing the crab jump and shooting jump hooks and, and things like that. So the game has evolved, and um, you know it's good to see you know the big man kind of being able to you know have some of that guard like skill um, bring it to the game. Um, it's a different dynamic. Uh, they got two guys over there, you know, Jokic and, and Bobo and, and Paul Millsap as well. So they got three. Um, but you're still starting to see it all around the league where uh, bigs are bringing, it, bringing the ball up the floor um, on a fast break or, um, you know, just off a rebound, um, you know, putting it on the floor, passing, um, shooting a three, shooting a mid-range, um, things like that. So um, it's good to see the big, the big game kind of, Evolve into you know guard type you know um, you know skill set. Hey, David Benjamin, please. Hey, Dean. Um, so, Ad in uh, Jared's book that you still haven't supported yet because um, you're not quite up to speed as a teammate. Uh, he uh, he said that Dwight was such a, a big part of your success against Denver in the playoffs last year. He felt actually, I think he wrote that Jokic. I don't think you used the word scared, but had uh, yeah. an effect that Dwight had on him versus anybody else you had. Um, and I know you all said that you're different at the center position, not necessarily better or worse. You guys who take charges versus as many blocks, et cetera, et cetera. But how much um, was Dwight a, a part of your success in getting to the finals, getting past Denver last year? A uh, huge part. Um, didn't play much in Portland, didn't play much. Uh, in Houston, and then you know to come into um, a Western Conference Finals uh, matchup and well series and and you know start the game for us and, and make sure and make sure that um, you know we secure the series. I mean he came in did his job 
he put pressure on Jokic. Um, being physical with him, um, you know, maybe got in his head a little bit, you know, so made it uncomfortable for him. Um, and I think without Dwight, you know, especially in that series, you know, tell him, you know, what would have, what would have been the outcome. And um, he was a huge part of our success, um, you know, and he he deserved every bit of that ring uh, as much as everybody else on that team. I'm Melissa Rowland, please. Hey, D. Um, a lot has been said about how LeBron has sort of helped you and, you know, known when to talk to you, known when to give you space in terms of his leadership. How would you describe his leadership and how has that helped you become the best version of yourself? Um, he's always been the guy that um, I leaned on. Um, you know, he's like a big, you know, bigger brother to me and, you know, helped me with things I need help with. Um, on and off the floor, so it's, it's been good just having him around and being able to, you know, call, text um, him whenever I need need you know support on anything. Uh, mainly on court stuff, just trying to figure out everything. Um, so it's been good just having him around, and you know, if he sees things, you know, he helped me. Um, and if I have questions about anything, he's always there, you know, picking up his phone or responding to a text. Um, and helping me out. So it's been good to have him around, just kind of, you know, helping me through through everything, um, you know, growing as a player, growing as a, um, a leader for a team and for an organization. Um, you know, something he's been very familiar with his entire career. Hey, Kari Jones, please. What's happening, uh, Maggie? You, you saw the game evolve. Third year in the league, were you already ahead of the curve? You know, were you working toward like shooting and spreading on the outside? And also, do you see the game evolving now? Um, yeah, I mean, I was a I was a guard in high school, so I've always kept, you know, my guard skills uh, when I hit my growth spurt. Um, so I was already shooting mid range, shoot good from the line, uh, shot threes in Kentucky. I didn't shoot as many in my rookie uh, my rookie year, my second year in the league, um, if any, um, just because of our system and. Uh, I was really like me and Robin Lopez were like the only big, so I kind of just stayed in the paint. But um, you know, I'll bring the ball up or whatever. But I've always kind of had the skill, so I was kind of ahead of the curve. Um, and still, just you know, evolving now. You know, the game is evolving. I wasn't, you know, I had a ball at the top of the key, you know, and for our sets, but I wasn't, you know, getting off the glass and pushing it or having guards on set screens and stuff for me. So. Um, you know, I think that aspect of my game has evolved just the way the league is going. Okay, last two questions. Um, Davide, please. Hey, AD Davide from Italy here. Uh, you've been on the road for seven games now. Which is the COVID rule, uh, the COVID protocol rule you, you can't get used to? That I can't get used to? Yeah, yeah. Um, Something very, you know, tough to deal with, et cetera. Uh, well, it was tough for me just going back home in Chicago and not being able to see my family. Uh, something that I've always done just because, you know, I've been at Western Conference, you know, since I've been in the league and I haven't, I don't go back. I only go there once. And so, um, you know, that's usually when I see all of my family and everything like that. And so uh, it's just tough not being, you know, we went to a lot of guys, home, hometowns, uh, Markeith, you know, Philly, KCP, and Atlanta. Um, Brian, Cleveland, you know, we just, you know, guys can see their families um, like they usually do. So I think that's the toughest part. Okay. Final question. Um, Dan has, a, I believe, another question. Yeah, just a quick follow up. Hey, um, we talk a lot, or, or people talk a lot, I guess, about the Clippers, you guys, the, the, the Nets as being like that, this really top tier. How, how, do you view Denver as, as a team that's, that's as dangerous as, as anybody else? Uh, absolutely. I mean, Denver is always in a conversation about one of the better teams in the league. There's always, they're always uh, one of the top teams in the West, top four or five teams in the West. Um, I mean, you know, they came back from 3-1 twice last year. I mean, I know they have a different team, uh, and Jeremy Grant was a big part of that, but um, they're a well-coached team, uh, well-rounded team, and they always can, you know, can put fear in somebody's somebody's heart. You know, they scare a lot of a lot of teams. Um, and so I've always viewed Denver as a, as one of the top teams in the league. Capable. capable. Hey Jared, uh, congrats on the on the 
Media book, I guess. Hey, man, that's what, hey, listen, I, I haven't done media in a while, man. You do a book and now they got me doing media requests. It's, it's, it's insane. Uh, no, but I, I've been enjoying it. Congrats. But I appreciate it. Like, you know, in, in the bubble, there was a snitch line. But I'm just wondering, like, What's the like? Is anybody from the team gonna call the snitch line on you for anything that you're pulling back the curtain on from this, uh, you know, with, with, with this enterprise? And, and more seriously, you know, for you, what's the line between kind of pulling back the curtain on on things, the value of pulling back the curtain on what was obviously a very uh, tumultuous year, and then um, things that stay in house maybe don't make. Well, I would say first thing first when you when you when you deal with snitching, it's usually someone doing a car a crime of you know inside information when you're trying to get for one this is a basketball this was an opportunity i didn't even seek amazon came to me with it to be honest with you so and i just think it was a unique rare experience in my life and in in life in general for us where you had the riot you you basically you know the riots when it came to the the protests when it came to coronavirus kobe's death China, it was so much that went in and who better to tell that story than myself who was with it all, as close as my relationship is with LeBron and AD, to be a player in that bubble, to have my son in that bubble, to, I just think that's something that people are going to look back on. And for me, it's, if you, if once you listen to it, I hope everyone does, you, it's, it's, it's broad. I mean, I talk about my, t my time with my son in there. That was a huge thing for me of having, you know, those, what, two months with my son one-on-one, -on -one, my wife wasn't even there to be able to you know, uh, you know, do, for school work with the, him coming to practices, a father son relationship. And then so for me, it's, it's the, the fine line is, is if it's personal stuff that you think someone wouldn't want to say when it comes to a teammate, when it comes to all, all this other stuff, like the President Obama quote, I think it's just good intake. I mean, people love this. I mean, we're entertainers. We're that. And so there's a there's there's a line. Maybe sometimes I cross it. That's life. Okay, David Benjamin, please. Jared, uh, got through the book yesterday. Good job, and congrats. Thank you. The um, the part about the Clippers, and uh, I just wanted to see how you and the team use them this year. Uh, you said last year that hey, Kawhi was coming off the championship, so you know he's defending the title, so he wants to have a certain viewpoint we're okay with that Patrick Beverly him talking is part of the way he's his family that's kind of his brand in the NBA but but Paul George um you guys took exception that's well I exception. think yeah no for sure no when it, when it comes to this for one trash talking and talking is a part of basketball Anyone can do it. Paul George, Kawhi, this. Sometimes you might say this person can is allowed to talk more than that person. But all it, what it comes down to it is players look for motivation. We look for different things. The Lakers, I play on the Clippers, so I know the difference of how we perceive them. They perceived us, the rivalry, the inside. The you know, Lakers getting all the media attention. Clippers don't. And at this time, this is when Kawhi could have came to the Lakers. And he chose the Clippers and had his thing and does the commercial with the crown. So right there, that's true. That's a with him not saying anything. That's already a shot right there. The new Kings of L.A., which is fine, which I actually like in basketball when it comes to certain stuff of, of, of adding to the rivalry. Um, Pat Bev does it. And there's nothing wrong with Paul George says. It's just, listen, I mean, where, where them, it's their city, their team. It's a little bit different. Bron's been here. Bron's a champion. Uh, if, I, if I can follow up. Yeah. Um, because you guys are playing the team that, that beat them uh, in the West Conference Finals tomorrow. <clears throat> How do you view the Clippers this year? I think that you can tell they have a, a sense of focus, a sense of determination. Uh, Paul George and Kawhi are playing at high, high levels. And I just think that they have a chance. I mean, listen, the Clippers, uh, if you didn't ask me who we were going to play, I, we were, I, I thought we were going to play the Clippers to go to the finals. I, I expected them to be there. I expect them to be there this year. They have the talent. They have the all-star. They have great coaching and stuff like that. And I think this is all – it's all part of basketball. I think the league needs it. The league needs us to play the Clippers. I think the league needs us to play Brooklyn. And I'm all for uh, you guys doing your job and having the stars play each other. And so we view them highly. And so we all look for motivation. And 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 for when, it's, when it comes to certain people, what they say, there's a reason why Braun and AD don't say anything when it comes to other teams and what they're going to do. They just go out there and do it. That's their personality. You know, I like to talk. Pat Bev likes to talk. People have their own different personalities. And we, you take certain things and you put it in the back and you remember what people said. Okay, Kyle Goodley. Hey, Jared. 
How we doing? Time no see. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, this is the open locker room season. I um, know. Uh, I actually have a non-foot question. Um, you know, the, the last two games, the rotations changed, and, and Wes and Marquise, two experienced vets, have, have not played. And, you know, Frank has told us that's not permanent. Those guys will get in games. But what's it been like from your role as a guy who – I mean, listen, they're, they're pros, so they know. I mean, we definitely have had conversations. We've talked that. I mean, Taylor Thornton Tucker's earned it. Let's just be honest. We all see it when, when he's, his play out there, his, his driving ability, his defensively what he's done. Uh, the only thing that was in in – Retro holding him back was his age, right? Was his experience and something that you can only get better through playing. I think that Wes and Markeith, and I'm not just saying that, we're going to need them to win a championship. We're going to need them when it's time to guard Kevin Durant, Kawhi. Wes has to play. There's going to be times when we went size, and as you saw with Keith, when it was small ball, we played Houston and we played Miami. He was crucial. He shot 40% in the playoffs and we won the championship. So for this is – we got to stay ready. Once my calf gets better, uh, they were just playing pickup. Like, I'll be in the games with them, like simulating games of, hey, keeping them sharp, staying letters. Uh, you know, when it comes to back to backs, when it comes to COVID, when it comes to other people not playing well, hey, we need to get Keith in. If it's a, a guy, you know, we're holding a guy back a game so Keith can play 20 minutes. Man, it's 72 games. We play every other day. They've been professional, they've handled it the right way. And you expect, any, you, you expect nothing less. That's how it should be on a championship team. And, and as a quick follow-up, how is the captain and what you're expecting of that? I've had a couple minor, minor, minor setbacks. It's called old age at 35 where I've played a little three-on-three, four-on-four, felt good, done some, did some sprints afterwards, tightened up a little bit. Today I came in pain-free. Um, so if you, want, if you want to give you a date, I don't really do dates, but I would say, man, maybe a week. I'm trying to, you know, now I'm trying to go slowly build back up. And let's just be honest, man. We can't even practice. This is our first practice in, what, two and a half, three weeks. Like, so the only thing I'm doing is calf raises and, uh, and, and ellipticals and, you know, running. So it's been slower than expected. And it's what happens. You get a little bit older. But the good thing about it, they don't need me. Okay. Dan, Dan, please. Here, we most definitely need you. Yes. <laughs> um, congratulations on writing a book and taking another media job away from us. Um, how dare you? I, I'm now an author. Yeah, how dare you. Um, being around LeBron for this last year plus, and knowing how regimented he is about his body and stuff like that, how did you think he would handle the short 71 days um, off season? And how do you think it's possible that here we are talking about a player who might be playing some of the best basketball ever at this late in his career. I never got the motion of like, hey, he, he was going to struggle. The thing about LeBron is it was just, you know, if anything, when he has a long layoff, having to ramp it back up. So obviously we won the championship in the short layoff. I just thought that if anything, in the middle of the season, he might need a game or two here just to recharge. But I mean, when you start off the games playing the Clippers and we're getting in there, like, LeBron, like D-Wade just said the other day, it's probably the best LeBron in the sense of him being smart, his jump shot. You know, we just we just joked about it the other day. Like, he's shooting career highs of shooting, and it's confident. He, I think it's the most attempts from three. So um, I never I never thought it, the, the short turnaround would hurt him necessarily. I just thought that there'll be a time in the middle, late the season, where hopefully, you know, we're, uh, you know, a number one, number two seed to be able to give him some games here before the playoffs, man. So... There's no fans here. We, we know it's a marathon. You know, people get, you know, we just lost to Detroit. It was like, you know, like a Super Bowl for them and how it is, how they come at you. And and we have to be prepared for that through a long season. But when it gets to the playoffs and we have LeBron and he's rested and AD's rested, it's going to be hard to beat us four out of seven. See the best player in the league still? Yes, yes. And, and, and that means, and I'm saying that he might not be playing statistically the best because of how it is. You got to think about this. I mean, LeBron's so smart. He knows I got to take care of AD. I got to make sure Montrez Harrell's doing well. Got got to make sure you know Dennis is engaged. I got how do I get Kuz some shots? We're doing a lot of different stuff, so that's going to take away some of his numbers necessarily, you know, statistic wise. But doing that, that's why I know MVP just goes by numbers plus minus. It's like okay, 
That's why him being number one in the West last year, taking a leader, having AD come on, new head coach. It's a lot of varies. That's why you say, hey, who's the most valuable to this team? There's no one more valuable than Braun. Now, if people like, let's be real, Durant playing phenomenal, Kyrie out of his mind, even Kawhi and Paul George. But what LeBron does on a day-to-day -day basis, man, it's it's unmatched. Because I know because I talk to players on their team. I could tell. I could tell you. I, 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 there's no one who talks to more players than me. So I know. I want to know what certain players are doing and how are they as a, a teammate, how are they as a leader. And, and I've heard from all of them. I wish you last couple of questions. Um, Jeff, we're going to go with uh, Brad Turner, please. Who? Brad. Oh, okay. Brad Turner. Man, this book, is this a fiction? This is real. This is this is oh, this, this is real as it gets. Right. They, Before you stole Dan's job by becoming an author, did you discuss the book with LeBron, AD, or, or any of your teammates? I did not. I did not. As a matter of fact, yeah. AD today when I was in the training room said, "Hey, tell tell everyone to stop tagging me about your book." Uh, no, I mean, listen. Before I came to the Lakers. Everyone knew the stuff I did with the media, you know, off-season TV, how I am. LeBron has mentioned before how good I am with the media. That's that's part of my job. I mean, let's be honest. I've been here a year and a half, two years, and you've heard no drama when it comes to the Lakers of what's going on, is coach on hot seat, this and that, players' arguments. You never heard that, right? You just haven't heard that. And that's one of my jobs. For one, I am in the media. I'm, t I'm brutally honest when it comes to what's going on and who's playing well, who's not, who we have to get going. And so for this, it's uh, they understand that. And everything in there, I think they would want people to know. People want to know about LeBron's regiment. I don't give them inside. They want to know about the the, the the chamber he sleeps in at night nighttime. Where, where can I get one at? How much does it cost? Like those are cool stuff inside. Or how, how is AD as a leader? What he what he's been doing? And you know, we're also human beings. Us having a Madden tournament, them talking to Obama, the protests, police brutality, and how we thought about that. People want that information because they want it. We want this to stop. We want this to be a better nation, a better world. So their their opinions, their views are are huge for that. And so. Uh, they haven't. Uh, hopefully, they hopefully they listen to it, and hopefully they they, they you know we, we talk about it one day. Okay, Melissa Rowland, please. Hey, Jared, you're a guy who obviously prides himself on you know your leadership, and you've been in the league for a long time, seeing a lot of different guys and the way they approach it. What strikes you the most about the way LeBron James leads his team, and is he the kind of guy who like tailors the way he leads, like depending on which guy he's talking to and kind of like adjusts for you know, sure. Like, different personalities. like what strikes you the most about him as a leader? I didn't know playing with him. He was this hands on with everybody. Like he literally has a unique relationship. I've been with Steve Nash, uh, Grant Hill, Chris Paul, Shaq, and some are loud, some are quiet, some lead in the just by example of how they are as a person. Uh, you know, we used to call Grant Hill Obama, just did everything the right way. Well, LeBron's very unique where he's a he's a guy's guy. He'll drink some wine with you. He'll he'll, you know, have a one on one talk with you. And, you know, you guys have looked up to him for a long time. So his words of encouragement, he knows what to say at the right time. And he knows when to get on you. Let's be real. Like when you, you see LeBron's body language, he doesn't hide when he's frustrated or mad. And you know that. And in a way is you want to play well for him, play well for yourself, because you know how hard he puts in to his craft. You see what he does and you don't want to let him, yourself and the Lakers down. So uh, I didn't know that he was like that when I first, I, you, you can just see it on the buses, talking to certain people on the plane. Hey, when someone's struggling, hey, us three, we're going to sit down and have dinner together. We're going to, we're going to work this out. Like it's just, it's, it's very rare, man. I've been, I, I haven't seen it. I've seen it with certain guys, but everyone could tell you they've had a, a, a personal talk with LeBron at certain times, both positive or negative, about what we need to do or what he needs to do for you, vice versa. Hey, Jared, if we can just do, thank you. If we can just do one last question. Um, Harrison's been waiting to ask a question, so we'll get him in. And okay. Thank you. Hey, uh, thanks, Jared. And excuse the construction outside. They decided to start right when I got called on. But, um, you know, one of the things I think all of us uh, love about you is you're always candid. So I just want to preface this. So this is not my opinion. But since I wrote about your comments about the Clippers and Paul George, and I know you talked a little bit about the trash talk today, 
um, you know, already. But I was just curious, like, my mentions have been filled, basically, with people saying, like, why does this guy get to talk trash then? And, like, when he's saying the people aren't good enough. So, like, what, I, mean, I guess what I'm trying to get at is I'm curious, like, what, what would you say to people who say that you're not good enough or you're not in a standing, like, in the NBA where you should be able to say this stuff? About well, well, for one, I mean, you can say whatever you want, any person. You're allowed to. This is a good thing about the country we live in and trash talking. So I don't know if you were on here earlier. There's nothing wrong with anyone say. Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, T. Lou. T. Lou is my guy. Anyone can say anything. It's what we use as motivation. And sometimes if you ever remember Michael Jordan, all the certain stuff that he used as motivation for it, it wasn't like they were wrong. It's what I view. I could view, you know, uh, you know, with certain Russell Westbrook views sometimes when he does the media, it, it being a stupid question. Doesn't mean it's a stupid question. It's what, how he views it at that time. So how we views it. This is obviously Denver is a team that you guys had a series against um, to bring back a lot of the same guys. Uh, is it kind of nice at this point when you've had some time to, kind of get the team together, get a sense of what you are to have. Uh, I don't know what you call it, a measuring stick game or, or what you might call it against a team that you played in a series before and then play some personnel that you're familiar with. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, every time you play against one of the best teams in the league, you know, there's always that, that measuring stick, um, you know, uh, concept in your mind. But, you know, it, it's we really want to have a big picture mindset more than more than anything. You know that we're we're still uh, looking at different combinations and uh, you know getting our new guys uh, up to speed with what we're doing and just uh, you know creating this year's identity, which is going to be you know always a little bit uh, slightly different from year to year. Um, but we're doing some really good things and uh, we're looking forward to the matchup tomorrow. Okay, I'm Stevie Dan. Uh, I feel like I've asked this maybe five or six different ways, but. I'll try again. With with the seventy one day off season, wherever it was, what what was a realistic expectation for, for where LeBron would be considering the mileage that he's had on his legs over his career and stuff like that, and, and just kind of how what's been your reaction to like where he's at twenty games into the season, considering that that short layoff. You're asking my expectation of his of what his play. Just where you thought he would where you thought he would be um, considering you know, a, a tight off season at, at his age. Yeah, I mean, I, any concern I had uh, was was centered around the first probably, uh, you know, two to three weeks of the season. You know, not not to this point. You know, it's just a matter of uh, making sure that he got his legs under him. You know, at the appropriate pace, and uh, and that we didn't we didn't go too too fast too soon. You know, with uh, with that. You know, I think once once you get into a you know a month or a month or so of work, um, you know, I feel like you know the off season is is behind us, and you know he's in a rhythm, and uh, you know I feel like that's that's where he's at right now. He's you know he's obviously uh, you know those first couple weeks uh, played really well, and um, you know there was there was not a whole lot of uh, you know. Uh, a rust or, or a bigger need for a slower ramp up or anything like that. So I think the way he started the season was was really impressive, um, and where he's at right now, I think is is where we would expect him to be. You know, at, at this point in the normal season. To quickly follow up on that, do you feel like AD has been able to get into the same rhythm um, because of kind of some of the stops and starts that he's had with like little tiny nagging injuries? Yeah, I think it is slightly different. You know, I, I think uh, the fact that AD's missed a couple games because of uh, some some minor injuries, I think, has, um, you know, uh, what's the right word, uh, restricted him a little bit or slowed him down from uh, the same type of build up. But he's not far behind. Next. Frank, I'm going to jump in. It's Bill. Thanks, um, Bill. Hey, um, there was the play, I think, at the end of the third quarter when Kuz got ISO defensively against Trey Young and and locked him up. And Kuz kind of joked about it on Twitter as, you know, kind of the idea he doesn't play defense. Um, you know, then earlier in the trip, he had the game with the six offensive rebounds. He had double doubles. I'm just curious, in terms of, like, maturity and the evolution of his game, have you seen him? embrace some of the dirty work more this year than even last year when I know he did take steps eventually last year. But has that evolved, you evolved this season? Uh, no doubt. Uh, there's no doubt that he's taken another step. Um, 
you know, I think the mindset of, of buying into, uh, you know, the role uh, with this team, this this Anthony uh, and and LeBron team, of um, you know being a being a dirty work guy and a, and a guy that can carry this the, the load offensively at times, um, but really someone that can impact the game in more ways than scoring. You know, that's that's the biggest uh, area of growth. You know, that I think Kuz has exhibited uh, toward the end of last year and into this year. Um, you know, the crashing. Uh, the run in the floor, um, you know, and then and then working his tail off on a defensive end. You know, I think you're seeing all those things play out. Sorry about that, Frank. My um, you know, dead. Next up, we're gonna go with Yovan. Hey, Frank. Um, well, when you guys added Mark this off season, um, what was this a matchup that you guys were kind of envisioning him? You know, for I know he's kind of become matchup based depending on the team, but you know, his post defense against Nikolai and kind of his past success was this kind of a, a matchup you were looking at? Yeah, I mean, we didn't sign Mark for any individual matchups, but um, you know, playing against some of the, the the better centers in the league and and having a defensive presence that can sort of tag team with Anthony um, with what he's able to do, but we don't want him to do full time. Uh, you know, that was part, that's part of the job description. So. Um, you know, knowing that, that Mark is an elite defender, uh, definitely weighed into to us bringing him uh, to our team. Uh, but it wasn't based on an individual matchup. Okay. And while I was gone, Bill, did you ask a question? Okay, great. Please. Frank, your lineup of um, LeBron, Trez, Kuz, Talon, and Alex uh, has only played you know, 30 some minutes together, but by a qualifying metric, they're the second best defensive lineup in the league uh, this year. How, how do you find that group? Uh, and, and could you use it more? And did you even get to practice with it before we saw the games? Like how, how did that group come, come to be? We, we threw a lot. I mean, we've, we've seen a lot of different combinations in practice and whatnot, um, you know, that, the uh, metric that you just threw out is uh, on an entirely too small of a sample size, um, you know, for us to, to really find meaning in it. You know, I think we still have a, a lot of basketball to be played. Um, like I said, I think it's only two games that we've that we've looked at that, but it's part of uh, roster exploration. And, um, you know, when we were uh, we hit a couple hit a little speed bump on our last trip where we felt like we could, um, you know, get a little bit of a burst just by shortening the rotation and um, you know, it wasn't by design to just throw those particular five guys together, but, um, you know, it's just sort of moving up two guys that, uh, that have been playing well, Talon and, uh, and Alex, um, in the rotation and getting them a, a, a few more minutes. Um, you know, and then in each of the last two games, we've hit stretches with, with that group out there. Uh, you know, like you said, where we, fl we played solid defense and we're able to go on a run, uh, offensively. So, uh, we'll continue to see how that plays out. Okay, and last question, we're going to go with Sirach, please. Hey, Coach. Uh, I was just wondering if you noticed you know, Dennis's quickness gave you guys any more extra versatility when attacking screens. Attacking screens offensively or defensively? Offensively. 